All right, this video is going to look at constructing dot plots and stem and leaf plots. Um, and there is just a straight example here we're going to jump into. So these are some exam scores for a first exam in Math 1342 last semester. And I'm just going to show you how to create these two types of graphs. So a dot plot, you will always want to start with a number line. And then always identify the smallest number, the minimum, and the largest number, the maximum. Looks like we go, need to go from 33 to 100. So I'm going to have a spot for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Um, because we are really concerned with the way in which the data is shown, um, creating a nice equal um, scale on your axis is very, very important. Um, and then I'm going to put in a little tick mark so that I can see where my halfway is for my five. Then I'm literally just going to put in dots. And if there's one that repeats, then I just stack it like that. And dot plots, you normally make them by hand. Um, I'm gonna make 67 down here actually, because I need two 68s and two 69s. So they're very good with smaller data sets. Um, because you have to go through each data point and do them by hand. So if I had like a thousand data points, I would not want to go through and do that by hand. And there will be some other graphical tools that we would use. All right, so I have four that made 94, 96, and 100. And so that's a dot plot. Okay, nice and simple um, dots on a graph is <laughs> literally what it is. All right, the stem and leaf plot, um, usually we make that vertical instead of horizontal. And then very similarly, we normally do tens down the left-hand side. And then the ones digit goes on the right-hand side and you do put it in order. So I chose this data set that was already ordered because it's nice when it's already ordered to make sure these go in order. Now again, Making sure that you are even and proportional is very important. In displaying the data. So it's really nice if you're able to, to maybe use like graph paper. So that those are all nice and evenly spread. And then sometimes we do a key. Because you might just have that graph, so you might be like 3, 3 equals 33, something like that. Now, another thing that you can do is you can split this up into fives. Um, I'll show you just a few of those. Let me scroll up just a smidge. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to do that, I'm not going to do the whole data set but I do want to show you what that would look like. So this is what you do if you want to do it in terms of like by fives. So anything that ends in a zero through a four goes in this first one. And you leave this piece right here blank because there are no 35s to 39s. Your two goes here and then your two nines for the two 49s go there. Okay, then you'd have like three here, and then your two fives. So um, kind of the same as with class width, with frequencies, this would have a class width of 10. 
and this would have a width of five. And I definitely wanna make sure that you see that when you don't have terms, you still include that tens value, you just leave it blank. 